thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming back from coffee break. Uh, today, I want to talk about uh, uh, maybe this title is uh, a little different from uh, or much different from what you see in the scheduler, because um, uh, I will explain later. I want to share something, uh, something, something new, something uh, we we are doing. We are doing these days, this month, this month. Okay, some some even in progress work. I want to share the ideas and uh, uh, have some discussion. So first of all, uh, I would like to thank Seagate. Uh, is anybody from Seagate? From Seagate? Oh, um, <laughs> I would like to thank Seagate because th this, this, this is the gap between uh, between vendors and users, right? Uh, because Seagate produce what? Produce disks. Who use disks? The developers, architectures. The uh, the vendors deliver OpenStack to mm, uh, to the end users, but but uh, Seagate is not here. This uh, this summit uh, from some point is a very good place for Seagate to promote their products, but they are not here. So this th this is the gap between uh, vendors and users, and uh, this gap uh, this gap is everywhere. Is everywhere we, we are facing this gap every day. Uh, but uh, back to this slides, I want to thank Seagate. Uh, the Seagate guy cannot be here, uh, but this work is uh, we, we we did it together. We did it together. I want to thank thank Seagate. Okay. So uh, Swift and Ceph. Swift and Ceph are both very popular uh, in the community of OpenStack. Swift uh, uh, was born in the dawn of OpenStack. OpenStack was uh, born in. Uh, 2010 and uh, Swift uh, actually is uh, uh, was developed uh, uh, begin to uh, develop uh, uh, the, the the beginning of the Swift the beginning of Swift was in 2009. Mm. And Seth 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 draws a lot of attention from the OpenStack community, even it is not part of OpenStack, but uh, really uh, many uh, many stackers care about Seth. About uh, because it can provide unified storage. We can uh, put uh, the uh, we can use Ceph as the glance backend, Nova backend, and uh, Cinder backend. So it is very very cool. It is very cool. Uh, but today we want to talk about uh, uh, I want to talk about object store. First of all, what is object store? Ceph with uh, with Ceph is based on Redis. Reliable automatic distributed object store, but that object store is not we are talking today. Uh, the object store we are talking today is object store service. Object store service. It is uh, S3 like storage, Amazon S3 like storage. Uh, data are stored in buckets or containers, not directories, not file systems, but buckets and, or, or containers. In, in Swift, it is containers. In Ceph, it is buckets. And in S3, there are also buckets. There are also buckets. And they provide REST for HTTP APIs. For, uh, we, can, we can talk to this storage system using HTTP, the language of internet. Let's see how uh, they, they can do this. For Swift, we have. Uh, uh, proxy servers, proxy servers, and uh, account servers, container servers, and object servers. So we can put object in containers and uh, uh, put containers in, account, in, in accounts. Accounts are associated with the tenants if we use it uh, uh, in a cloud environment, especially integrated with Keystone. The in Ceph, in Ceph, in Ceph, we use the Redis Gateway. Redis Gateway translates the RESTful object APIs into the native object API, the API, the APIs of Redis, uh, of Redis, Redis Reliable uh, Automatic Distributed or Object Store, that object store. Uh, the communication between Redis Gateway and uh, Redis Cluster uh, use sockets, but Redis Gateway provide REST for 
APIs to the applications. I, I, I want to say something more. Uh, in this picture, in this picture, the storing nodes provide uh, uh, runs container uh, account server, container server, and object server. Uh, for some cases, for some cases, we may want to uh, put container server in uh, some some other servers, some other nodes, or put them put the container DB on SSDs, SSDs because container usually become the uh, bottleneck of uh, Swift. When I prepared, uh, when I was prepared this talk, I found a very interesting thing. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, anybody in this room who who loves Ceph, who loves Ceph, please raise raise your hand. Okay, uh, who loves Swift? Oh, there is a. Um, I, I find that uh, um, the one the ones who like Ceph almost do not like Swift, and vice versa. The ones who like uh, who love Swift, do not like uh, Ceph. Uh, this is very strange, and uh, and I think this is not uh, very clever, uh, <laughs> clever. <laughs> because uh, because uh, because clever ones, cl uh, clever ones will not argue which technology is good and which is not. They will choose choose technologies accordingly according to their use cases, their needs, their requirements. So if we search Google, Self Swift, OpenStack, we can see uh, many, a lot of, a lot of results, a lot of results. <laughs> so uh, I, I do not want to repeat this. I do not want to repeat this. Uh, some of the, some of them are uh, really good. I, I recommend uh, this one. This one is from Marinus, and uh, it is a talk uh, available on YouTube accessible on YouTube. It is a talk on uh, NAS Summit, the summit in Vancouver. Summit in Vancouver. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, this was a very good talk. Uh, he shared his experience, Marini's experience, in a real case with multi-region deployment. Uh, multi-region deployment use uh, both Ceph and Swift, both Ceph and Swift, because we can we can deploy a multi-region storage system with with Swift easily, but the uh, but if we want to use block storage, we want to use block storage, block storage for Nova, block storage for uh, Cinder, Swift cannot do that. We need to do uh, we need to use Ceph. So uh, in this case, in this case, he uh, use Ceph in every in every. Uh, uh, in, in every site, in every site, uh, at the same time, you Swift to uh, to share some data, to share some data between data centers. So this is very interesting, and uh, it is a very good case to uh, uh, to show how to choose technologies according to requirements, but not uh, compare one with another. Uh, So uh, these are some questions. Uh, I think it is very. Uh, it is some uh, uh, can show the the um, shows shows the the metric the advantages of uh, each other. Uh, if you want to uh, deploy multi-region cluster, multi-region storage system, uh, Swift is uh, is easier, and Ceph can also do that, but. Uh, uh, the rights, the rights can only put to one of the regions, so uh, it is not a, a really multi-region deployment. But uh, Swift do not provide immediate consistency. So if you use Swift, you may face the problem we call eventual consistency. Some rights happened, but the reads do not get the latest version. Do not get the latest version. Uh, uh, reads may get results from Older version. So, so, but after uh, a period, after a period, uh, other reads can get the uh, that's the version. We call this eventually consistency. Eventually consistency. This, uh, uh, especially in multi-region deployment, Swift may 
uh, if you use Swift uh, with multi region deployment, you may face that problem. Okay, you, you may face so so if you want immediate consistency or strongly consistency, you may use Ceph. Uh, and uh, uh, unified storage, unified storage, uh, you use Ceph for a block storage and uh, for Cinder, for Nova, for Glance. That is uh, uh, the core thing of Ceph. Uh, but uh, we, we can see others uh, user-defined functions for uh, object store, object store service. We want to uh, do on-fly compression, on-fly deduplication, on-fly uh, virus scan, uh, virus scanning, virus scanning, to scan the user uploaded data, to scan the user uploaded data. Uh, this is uh, this can be can be implemented with Swift uh, easily because Swift is Swift proxy, or Swift is based on WSGI framework. WSGI framework. We can put middleware into that framework. It is pluggable, so uh, it is uh, it is very easy. Uh, also, Swift provide some uh, we call it advanced storage storage uh, advanced object storage. Features, for example, object uh, expiring, object varying. Uh, in fact, the, all of this, all of this, uh, and the, the, there are others. All of these features are implemented with WSGI middleware. WSGI middleware. So, uh, self is not based on WSGI because it is not written in uh, Python. So, uh, uh, self, uh, for now, he cannot provide this feature. Uh, for another question, you may uh, take, take something into account. How many servers are uh, available? How many servers you can use to build a system? We know that uh, if we want to make a uh, uh, distributed storage system reliable, uh, you may need three or more nodes, three or more nodes. Uh, uh, actually, if you use it in production, you may need uh, four nodes or five nodes uh, at least. So, if you do not have many servers, if you, it is a small cloud, it is small cloud, you, and you want to use OpenStack, and you also want to provide object storage service, so uh, you'd better choose Ceph. You'd better choose Ceph. Okay. And uh, there are other things, so I, I, uh, I will not list uh, all of them, but I want to say some misunderstandings. misunderstandings. Uh, Swift is not good at storing large objects, and Ceph is not good at storing uh, small files. Oh, we often heard this, but, but not really, not really, <laughs> not really. Uh, Swift now support, support large objects with uh, a, a series of uh, APIs, a series of APIs. Uh, details can be found on docs.opsstack.org. For self storing uh, small files, this is very interesting. This is done by uh, this is a lab in a university, a lab in a, in a university. In his, in his, this is not a paper, but a report. In this report, it uh, uh, it uh, uh, contains detailed information about uh, uh, his test, his test on a small. On a small self cluster, on a small self cluster, uh, the results show that self can handle small files, uh, very good. But, but uh, I I need to say that uh, this cluster is small. This cluster is small. So, so this these two questions are not really because uh, uh, something depends on how you use your cluster, how you tune your cluster how you tune your cluster. For example, if we do not use the APIs for large objects, uh, large objects in Swift, okay, uh, the performance of storing large objects are, are, are bad, but, but we use it correctly, we use it correctly, uh, it is better, it is better. The performance uh, it is, it is uh, we can, uh, I, I did some tests, the, uh, 
the bandwidth, the bandwidth of the proxy server, the bandwidth proxy server, 10 gigabytes, uh, 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits uh, almost uh, uh, rest uh, its, its limit. So the throughput is not a problem for large objects. And uh, let's get back to uh, object store. Let's get back to object store. I want to uh, talk about uh, something uh, more interesting. I want to talk about something more interesting. This is a picture I took this, this noon. Uh, we can see uh, SwiftStack. There was, there was a talk from SwiftStack. Uh, the title is Swift is not just for OpenStack, but for many environments and apps. Mm. And uh, there's something other, some numbers. Uh, this, I, I did not think it is uh, uh, based on very comprehensive in investigation. Uh, but uh, the trend, the trend shows that uh, funding in object, store, uh, in object store storage raising exponentially, raising exponentially. What really drives this money? Why do they spend this money on object storage? On object storage. Glance, provide storage for Glance. Obviously not. Obviously not. Glance, uh, uh, not worth this money. Uh, object store speaks the language of uh, internet we have talked uh, before, the, uh, the HTTP, the language of internet. So what happened on the, the internet? Uh, how do you, how do you push tweets these two days? How do you push photos on Facebook these two days? I think uh, many tens of photos, everybody, tens of photos, everybody. So uh, this, these are the real needs, are the real things happens for object store, object storage, mobile apps, social applications, Twitter, eBay, Taobao in China. And uh, WeChat, China, uh, Chinese use WeChat. Tens, even hundreds of billion images uh, was, uh, are stored on Taobao.com today. Tens of billions, or, or, or even hundreds of billions. I, I do not uh, get the uh, specific numbers. But the, 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 image, uh, the number of images are very, uh, are very large, are very large, uh, are very large. So, so this, the, these are the dominant workloads on internet and the dominant workloads for object storage. So uh, let's see this picture. Let's look at this picture. Uh, how can we model in the real world workloads? The real world lo workloads. We may test uh, object storage use uh, with cost bench, with the assets bench as a bench. That will tell you the limit, the limit of your storage system. But what users care about, what customers care about. Uh, the request, the request from internet, the request uh, from internet uh, obeys the poison distribution, poison distribution. Let me assume that every day, assume that every day you will, uh, you will receive 10 emails, you will receive 10 emails, but even uh, average, average, averagely, uh, every day you will uh, receive 10 emails, but not, not exactly today, not exactly tomorrow, but the, but the average number, but the average number. So this is the, uh, this is the characters of uh, internet access. Uh, requests come in, with uh, obey the poison distribution, poison distribution, but not, not constantly, not constantly. So uh, we see this picture. Lambda is the expected value, expectation. The is the, the average value. Lambda is the average value. We can see with the average value, uh, lambda equals one equals four equals ten. K is the concurrency. Every unit time. Uh, for example, every every seconds, every seconds, it 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 is not constant, not con but uh, uh, prob probability, uh, probability, probability. Uh, so so what the custom really 
uh, cares about. Uh, he should care about uh, when the when the average number is ten or one hundred or one hundred. What is the average latency from a request to the re response? From the request to the response. If we use a, a mobile app, we uh, want to pull a picture, want to pull a photo. We cannot wait it for two, uh, for ten seconds, or even uh, five seconds. We cannot wait. We cannot wait. Uh, actually, the uh, mobile apps, mobile apps need to push the photo in uh, in one seconds or lower. In one seconds or lower. So the uh, latency between request and response are very important. Are very important. This is what the uh, internet applications really need, the mobile applications really need, but not uh, what is the limit, what is the limit, what is the uh, 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 IOPS, for example, uh, IOPS, request per second, this story system can support. Not this, but uh, uh, when, when the workload is, uh, uh, the average workload is, uh, uh, for example, 100 per second, 200 per second, uh, what is the average latency? What is the average latency uh, from request to response? What is the maximum latency from request to response? What is the 90% latency? What is the 80% latency? These are the real needs. So uh, how the next question is how we can get how we can get the lambda, the lambda. This this number, this number. So so I will explain how we can get this number and uh, how we can test a, uh, a story system, an object story system to, the, uh, to get the latency. Uh, these are kinetic drives. Kinetic drives, I will, I will explain it later. So let's assume there is a mobile social application. Uh, there is a, mo a mobile social application with uh, uh, 100,000 users, 100,000 users. And uh, every day, 30% of the users are active. One active user uses this app 30 times every day, averagely. And uh, if he use it, if he use it, uh, use it, uh, it will perform five reads every time he uses this app. We can, we, we can think about if we uh, to pull images from Facebook, pull images from Facebook, from Twitter, from Twitter. And 80% uh, of the workload happens in two hours. Maybe uh, when you go to work, when you have lunch, in the two hours. So we can get the lambda. The lambda is uh, 500. So the average uh, the average uh, workload, average workload is 200 per second requests to the object store story system for the images in this uh, support for this uh, mobile social application. And uh, and we uh, we we develop uh, we uh, we develop a small benchmark tool with Seagate. So uh, I want to explain. Uh, what is kinetic first? Kinetic, uh, kinetic open storage project, this is a, a project from Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation uh, was founded uh, this year, but kinetic drives, uh, kinetic drives uh, uh, was, was developed uh, two years or three years uh, ago. And this open project, this open project uh, was launched by Linux Foundation this year. The left is, uh, uh, the right is a kinetic drive. So uh, different from conventional drives, conventional disks, this drive do not provide block interfaces, but KV interface. And uh, it will be connected via uh, internet, via internet, not uh, SAS or bus or FC uh, or, or 
or fiber channel or, or something else, but with, in, uh, with, Ethernet, with Ethernet. Every drive will have an IP address, will have an IP address. And uh, uh, how to access these drives with the kinetic libraries. So this is very similar to what Ceph are doing. What does Ceph do? Ceph, uh, there are OSDs, OSDs, object storage demons. And uh, uh, there are libraries. Libraries perform read and write to the OSDs. And the OSDs uh, provide a KV interface. So this is very similar, very similar. So this is uh, uh, a kind of, uh, a kind of object, object storage device, I think. Then what is uh, connected best Swift? Connected best Swift. Connected best Swift uh, do not have, uh, uh, we, we can see the architecture here. We can see the architecture here. We have a count server, container server, and object server run, run, they run on a storage node. A storage node is uh, uh, X-value, uh, X-X3, uh, so, so, sorry, I'm sorry, X-X6 uh, server, it is a PC server, it is a PC server. But uh, for, for kinetic based Swift, for kinetic based Swift, we still have PC servers, but uh, the number are smaller. We only use uh, proxy servers, actually, we run account server and the container server on that nodes, on that nodes, on the proxy server nodes. So we also call it PACO server, P-A-C-O, PACO, PACO server, because there are proxy server, uh, account server, container server, and object server on that nodes. But uh, the object server actually do not store data on the disk of the servers, but Object server do not store data locally, but on kinetic disks, on kinetic disks. So uh, we do not need server here. We do not need server here. We can uh, save a lot of uh, servers. We can save a lot of servers. The storage density will arise. This, uh, th there is a detailed uh, talk, detailed talk on at an enter summit, 2014. So uh, if you are interested in this, you can uh, refer to this talk on YouTube. Uh, this is the environment we test. Uh, we test uh, the uh, Canadian best suite. So it, it, uh, we can use the benchmark tools, the benchmark tool uh, to test the kinetic based Swift and uh, conventional Swift. Both are okay, but uh, uh, the work is in progress. So uh, we did this first. We did this first. These are the packet servers. And this, this, this is a uh, kinetic, connected, we call it connected box or connected, connected board. Connected board. Connected board uh, provide 10, gig, uh, 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits uh, network access uh, to read and write the data from uh, these disks. And uh, uh, this is the one unit, one U with 12, with 12 drives. Every drive uh, with four uh, terabytes, four terabytes. So the storage density is, uh, uh, is higher than, than servers. Uh, than servers. Every, uh, one PACO server, one PACO node, one PACO node can connect it to several kinetic board. So, so in, in this picture, in this test, uh, we only use one of them, but uh, uh, actually it can, uh, it can connect it to several of them, usually uh, five or even 10 of them, uh, depends on your uh, depends on your use case, depends on your workloads. So we use, uh, uh, so we use uh, benchmark tool, also run on this server, also run on this server. Uh, generate, uh, generate loads that uh, 
uh, obeys the Poisson distribution. I, I can show a, a demo here. Uh, okay, I'll try it. For this version, the load are generated uh, on one container. Uh, the name is NACO. We can see this benchmark runs. And uh, here's a number. Here's a number. Uh, operations outstanding on arrival. It means when this request arrives, how, uh, how many requests are not responded? Are not responded. So, so we can see this concurrency. This concurrency are not uh, constant, but uh, it is from a, a distribution. So the, uh, after, after the test, the, in this test is very short. We can run it for, uh, for, for, for minutes or, or for hours. Uh, the uh, average, average, of, uh, average latency is uh, uh, about 100 milliseconds. And uh, minus of the latency is uh, uh, 11, about uh, 12, about 12 milliseconds and uh, the maximum latency uh, is about uh, 400, 400 milliseconds. So, so this is a very simple benchmark. This is a very simple benchmark. We are improve it. And uh, uh, that demo I ran on my uh, that demo was run on my laptop. On this environment, in this environment, the object size is uh, one uh, megabyte, one megabytes, and uh, we get the result of uh, the maximum latency, uh, the maximum latency about uh, 500 uh, uh, milliseconds, and uh, a maximum latency about 500. Uh, milliseconds and average latency about uh, 66 milliseconds. So the result is uh, acceptable. Uh, we, we, uh, we, will, uh, we will try uh, try some parameters, some other parameters, because in real world, the object sizes are not the same. So, so this is uh, one megabytes. All of, all of the objects are one megabytes. Uh, but in the, in the real world, the the size of objects are not the same. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the size are normally distributed. And uh, the workload should be hybrid, not only reads. This only tests the reads. Not, uh, in, in real world, in real world there, are, there, there will not be only reads or only writes. They will be hybrid. So, so this work was, uh, uh, is, is in progress. This work in in progress. So, we can see the key point is these numbers, these numbers, as the customer really know, they know how many users he will, 
he will get or, or he have he have how many users and uh, uh, he can uh, he can get the daily active uh, percentage of the users and uh, uh, the other numbers some somehow depends on uh, what he designed his application and some depends on the uh, user depends on the users how to use his application but uh, these numbers are the customers can really get. So he used he use these numbers to get this number, and he can know uh, how much, how much. How many things, how many things he will, uh, he, he need to buy, he need to buy, and how much he need to spend on the devices and the servers. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Question? Thanks, great presentation. Um, have you benchmarked uh, Seagate's kinetic drive with Ceph and Swift? Uh, only, only with Swift. Uh, you only haven't with tested with uh, Ceph? No, no that, uh, last not year's, with Ceph. Uh, or this, uh, when Coors Summit uh, the Toshiba guys were uh, benchmarking their KV drives with, uh, with, with Ceph. With Ceph. Oh. It was pretty cool. Uh, um, oh. They were actually, I mean, the KV drive from Toshiba has got uh, 256 GB of cache in it. And yeah, so. maybe the, the, the interface of the devices are, are different. Or the no, it's, it's kinetic API based. Kinetic API? Yeah. Kinetic standard API. Yeah, I, I mean, the Toshiba guys haven't released it as a product, obviously. So, But, but you could take the Seagate drive and Test it with test Ceph. With Ceph. Yeah. Okay. Something Thank you. to look into. Thank you. <laughs> uh, again, I think this is one of the best presentations I've seen in a long time. Thank you. Um, and I like the uh, the tool that you're creating. Is it available somewhere so we can help you? Yes, it is on, on GitHub. But uh, uh, the codes on GitHub was, uh, is it's not the latest version. Okay. Uh, I, I'll upload uh, the latest version, uh, the, the, the newest, newest code in yeah. the, the, these days, in the uh, next month. Okay. Next month. I look forward so, uh, to it. A little, uh, a few bucks. Okay. <laughs> a few bucks I want to fix. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, how do we find you can, it? You can, uh, you can, you can search uh, on GitHub for knobs. Uh, Oh, Knobs, okay. Knobs. Um. Oh, oops. So this, this. So for Knobs. Maybe the best way is to uh, to develop uh, uh, to 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 rewrite to rewrite the node generator code in cost bench or SS bench, not uh, a standalone uh, benchmark tools. Yeah. Correctly. Yeah. Yeah. How would Ceph handle the generator? Uh, Swift with kinetic drivers. Uh, no, no, I got this. You actually said that. I thought I saw a slide that said the kinetic will jump much more than the predecessor. Uh, I don't know if you're interested in this. Is that supporting Ceph? Okay. It is supporting Ceph. It is supporting Ceph, but uh, not. Uh, uh, I don't know how 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 he will perform. Uh, if you use, if you if you integrate it with uh, with Ceph, connect it with Ceph, you also need some servers. Yeah, you'll need the, the monitors. Like yeah, yep. Yeah. So I wasn't sure how you'd be doing that. Uh, I don't. Know. 
So it is uh, uh, much complex, much complex to uh, to develop a self, uh, uh, connected best self or then connected best Swift. This is simple, but uh, yeah, I guess this is simple. And this I totally get, but there are people yeah. that I'm sure also would want to run like a block. There's some opinions. Well, how expensive do these drives get when the interfaces change from SATA to this uh, HTTP directly? Change. This drives, this drive, connected drives. Um, uh, uh, I do not know uh, too much information about uh, the marketing uh, or, or sales, but uh, uh, I heard that it is not uh, uh, very much expensive then. Uh, it is not, not very much expensive. It is uh, a, little, a little more expensive than uh, ordinary drives. But but not very much. The, the tracks are more expensive. So so it is. Layer, yeah. And so it makes up for it in the hardware phase of the compute. So you save you you save servers you save you save nodes. It's basically offloading the CPU computation from the servers to the drive itself. Mm. It yes, it is based on the the it, yeah yeah, it is based on the computational. Uh, the, the computational workload is not very high for object store. But such servers are anyway very cheap because they come with a very low capacity in CPU because not much Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arm. You, you, you use ARM. Yeah. They use ARM. So this is uh, Intel CPUs and uh, bridges chips. A very ex uh, expensive architecture, but uh, ARMs are uh, uh, cheap. You're welcome.